Hello, and welcome to Wise Up On Air, hands-on edition. I'm calling it Wuha. What do you guys think of that? I like it. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to count the letters in the acronym. Yeah, yeah. sounds good. Wise Up On Air, hands-on Wuha. Cool. Uh, well, thanks so much for joining us today. I'm joined by my colleagues at Audio Kinetic, uh, Ryan and Sean. You folks uh, want to introduce yourselves for, um, for, for people who are tuning in before we get deep into the WISE Impactor plugin. Tell us a little bit about yourselves and the role that you have at Audio Kinetic. Uh, I'm uh, Ryan. I've um, uh, been at AK for a, a four years now. Uh, I moved out here from the West Coast and joined the R&D team and um, pretty much been working on DSP and plugins the whole time, help out with some like other features here and there. Um, but uh, I really love it and uh, like I definitely consider Montreal home now and uh, yeah. Awesome. Well, and I remember traipsing around in New York during the AES conference, uh, chasing down free jazz and uh, and snacks. Uh, it's true. I, I had the privilege of meeting you, you, Damien, like when you were still just a figure in the game audio community and hadn't yet joined AK. So it's it was a real pleasant surprise when you came joined us. Yeah, yeah it's a, a shining jewel in my memory. I'm glad uh, we crossed paths back then. Uh, and then Sean, you're uh, you're uh, way over there. Uh, yeah. Tell us where you're coming from. So I'm also in the research team. I've also been there for around about four years. The first year and a half I was out in Montreal, but then I came back here, which is Scotland, where I'm from. Excellent. Um, and I'm working, yeah, remotely. Um, I'm like the the Scotland office of the research team. Um, I spent like six months in the integrations team uh, working in Unreal and Unity and now in the research team I spend a lot of time in Unreal like bringing the the new research focused features to the Unreal integration um, and yeah but today we'll talk about Impactor which me and Ryan worked on together uh, some months ago yeah, and this is a, a combined effort. We have the Impactor plugin, which is in an experimental state. Um, and that's a plugin that you can get through the launcher. We'll go through that process here in a second. Uh, and it also has the Impactor Unreal demo, uh, which again, uh, has been crafted to help illustrate uh, the cool things that are happening. So let's uh, shift to the presentation. Cool. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to give a rundown of just, I think, all the uh, for your information or like, you know, basic uh, info about uh, impact that you might need to know. Um, like Sean was saying, him, uh, him and I worked on it uh, uh, pretty much intensely for about a year. And then with COVID and working from home, there was another year of uh, building it up to release and making it stable and stuff. Um, but uh, for everyone out there, I think the, the most important thing that we would want you to know before we delve into the details is where, where can you get it? Well, it's in the launcher. So when you're installing a version of WISE, at least 21.1, I guess, um, you can choose it at the, uh, in the plugin list there. And you can make sounds with it in the authoring tool. But if you would like to generate sound banks and use it in your game, then you need a license. Uh, we're not going to charge you for it. You just need to go to the website and uh, click on that button there. And uh, if, you, if you don't do this, you'll see the little warning the first time you generate sound banks reminding you. So don't worry if you forget. It's not a big deal. Uh, and finally, Damien mentioned the Impactor Unreal demo, which we'll definitely be getting into. And uh, just so you know, if uh, you know, even some people internal to AK go looking for it and have to, uh, you know, double check or remind themselves. Um, but it's in the SDK plugins Impactor Unreal folder, uh, and there's the Wise project as well as the uh, Unreal project, and we have 
uh, pre-compiled binaries for Windows? And do we, is there one for Mac as well? How does it work? I believe it's just Windows. I could be wrong. Um, oh, no, there's, okay. a, there's a Mac binary as well. There's a Mac binary as well. Sorry. Great. And, uh, you know, it's our intention that if you want to build these yourself, uh, you can as well. Uh, probably a little bit of patience is uh, required, but should should work. Um, we've, uh, of course, there's documentation and help for the plugin, and we've also written some blogs about it. If you, uh, somewhat as a compliment, I think, to this uh, this live stream. So if, uh, we talk about the underlying uh, like uh, DSP in the uh, in the plugin, and then there's a blog about the demo. And finally, there's a third one that came out recently that's about um, our sort of analysis of how the cross synthesis works and what it, what it's doing. Um, that's great. We're going to dig into the details behind all those blogs over the course of this live stream. And we've already put the links into the description so that folks who want to dig deeper into the black and white and really pretty pictures of those blogs uh, can do so. Yeah, and uh, part of our our model for Impactor is, you know, we're giving it away uh, for free, uh, but we we're really hoping for some community en engagement and feedback. This was a you know an experimental idea or an unconventional plugin idea, and uh, it helps us assess what what to do next and what to uh, pursue as research and uh, goals. Uh, when we hear back from you guys, and it's also extremely validating, I think, to uh, talk to sound designers and hear sound designers work uh, and see them totally just uh, break apart and and misuse or use your uh, the the tools that you've put so much like love and care into. So um, there's a survey link on the tool, and of course, like any of the channels that are uh, open and available to talk to us at AK are, are uh, you know. Uh, you can write to about uh, Impactor. Yeah, it's true. We've, um, we've done some developer interviews. Um, folks who are out in front using Impactor in their projects. And I would echo that, Ryan. It's like hearing the results of the hard work that we do here at Audio Kinetic. Well, it lands in games uh, that use WISE eventually, and, and that's a joy to behold. Uh, and in, in the tools, from the tools perspective, to be able to get that kind of, um, yeah, to have that experience with folks who are using Impactor, definitely drop us a line. Let us know how you're using it. Let us know how you're abusing it and uh, what kind of cool things you're making it do. So, and if you haven't I used it we, yet, this is your chance. We're gonna walk you through it. We've already had some uh, extremely useful uh, feedback about the usability of the plugin in particular cases and have made some point release um, adjustments, bug fixes as well, but adjustments, uh, I think, to make it um, uh, like quality of life improvements, I would say, it's probably the best word. Um, uh, just reiterating here, but, you know, as if people tuned into the, the uh, Wise World wide streams as well, we said that, you know, this is a uh, research or experimental and that we want to hear and sort of collaborate with the community but also uh, we engineered this like everything else we engineered AK it went through QA passes uh, automated testing yada yada so you know we're confident in its stability and performance and we don't want it to be a, a, a risk a production risk for you to use in that sense you know it's it's a creatively open-ended thing but it shouldn't jeopardize your CPU budget or your deadline, like that. Um, taking it away uh, from just you know uh, FYI info. One of the questions we talked about going into this live stream uh, to open it up with was, what happens when you drop a file into uh, Impactor uh, in a bit more detail? So you know. That's dropping it into this list here. Uh, yeah, you can see my mouse on the screen. Uh, what happens when it drops? Or what's the, what's the plugin doing? You know, maybe the DSP. If you're interested in that, well, uh, Impactor is really there's a an analysis plugin in the the front end and authoring tool, and that's kind of a 
uh, unique software pattern that we set up. And hopefully one day in the future, we'll be able to generalize that in a way where uh, even third party developers or other developers outside of AK can write their own audio analysis services and have them work automatically with plugins that load media in uh, WISE. Yes. For now. So if you're interested in that, sure. definitely drop a line as well. If you're a third party developer mm -hmm. or someone who uh, is into that, like Ryan said, reach out. Yeah, for now, of course, we the, our first priority was making it worth uh, work for ourselves. But uh, again, that could that's a something that could potentially grow out of this as well. Um, so that analysis plugin, uh, when you drop the file in on the the, the sort of core impact or recipe side, it uh, it analyzes the uh, audio file in two ways. The first way is a, a narrow band analysis where it finds the um, uh, well, the most prominent resonances or the parts that ring out the most, if you will, and it filters those out and stores them as sinusoids uh, with a, you know, a pitch and a phase and a, a, an amplitude envelope. Uh, and then whatever is left over once the resonances are filtered from is uh, analyzed again and we design a filter bank. Um, that we deconvolve, uh, which is to say, it's also sort of a filtering order abstraction, but uh, once we've designed the filter bank, then we figure out what the leftover sound is from the, the input here, so that when we get to the, the, the game runtime again, we can use the leftover plus the filter bank to reconstruct that sound, and then, and then add the sinusoids on top of that, and you get the, the original sound back in its entirety. And, and the way that that's expressed in the plugin is as the impact and as the body. Yes, uh, I should put a, a picture of the UI here, but I can skip back. So uh, yeah, the, the metaphor on the, the UX is that the, the body part is that narrow band, it's the ringing resonances, and the impact is that the, the broader filter bank, it's, it's usually a, a, a wider band, uh, wider band kind of step and uh, also the excitation that underlies it. Is it fair to say that the, uh, that the impact is the, the wave file and the body is the numbers? Uh, uh, the split isn't so clean, I okay. guess. It could have been, but there's a bunch of I think subjective choices we made, but the what ended up sounding better is that the body is the wave file, if you will, yep. and and also um, the filter bank, and uh, the well, I'll get to a reason why in a minute, yep. but I was going to add that um, what was I going to add? Uh, well, yeah. No big but deal. it splits it into um, these pieces that are then dynamically recombined in the plugin to get that variation. Yeah, and, right, and and uh, my point was to be before you do any transformations, uh, splitting the sound into pieces and then recombining them like this flow graph, you get you know more uh, very close to the exact same sound out. It's a transparent process. Maybe there's a little bit of numerical error, but uh, you know I'll, I'll I'll assure you that the sound is the same. The split that we chose between the impact and the body allowed for the most creative sort of transformations. And that's where you have the controls like mass and velocity, yeah. where uh, associating the filter bank with the body and with the wave file allowed for a, a, a warping of the, the filter bank parts to have a more sort of expressive sense of mass when you change the sounds. Cool. Cool. That's a great overview. Um, if that's that's sort of all I have for slides, I wonder if there's anything that uh, you two want to delve into on the DSP or any anything you want to add, or if there's questions, of course. Or we got a few folks uh, who are tuned in today. Thanks for joining us. Be be sure to drop any questions that you have as we go along. We're here to demystify any terminology or help uh, 
you know, the understanding of what's happening with the Impactor plugin. Uh, and we're also going to break some stuff here in a minute. So stay tuned. It's going to get loud. Uh, and meanwhile, um, yeah, let's keep moving forward. Uh, are we going hands on? Awesome. Uh, so Impactor is added to a sound SFX object in WISE as a uh, source plugin. So from a sound SFX, um, and I can see your screen, it looks great. OK, can you hear me? Yeah, and we could hear you. Uh, so. Um... Yeah, I'll, I'll take what Ryan's given you the overview of and try and like go into detail. Um, so I guess just going back to what he said at the very start, um, this is the, the WISE project for the Impactor demo that you can find um, here. So I, I've installed this version of WISE, and then I go to SDK Plugins Impactor Unreal Impactor UV4 demo. Um, so it's, it's hidden away in here a little bit. Um, the process of, of getting the sound banks generated and everything in Unreal is documented here in this quick start guide. Um, just a little text file. Uh, this is less complex than it looks. It's just you know spelled out in clear detail. So like Ryan said, you need to go online and get a license for Impactor, uh, apply it to your WISE project, and then you can open the Unreal project and generate sound banks, and you're good to go. Um, so let's look at the WISE project to begin with. And the location of that WISE project was right there in that folder as well. Yes. Great. Yeah. Um, so if we start with, so in this in the WISE project for the, the Unreal demo, we have all of the uh, SFX sounds are instances of Impactor. So everything's done using Impactor. Um, if we look at the wine glass impact, for example, um, just to sort of demonstrate what Ryan was talking about with the splitting into the impact in the body. Um, let's just make sure you can hear it first. Nope. Are we good? Nope. Okay, that's my fault. Try again. I forgot, I forgot the button. It's okay. Okay. Do, 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 do. What do you got? Nope. Oh. No? Hmm. I definitely pressed the button that time. <laughs> cool, cool. Uh, let's try it one more time. Okay. Because you can never push mm -hmm. enough buttons, can you? So I share content, include computer sound, and then I go to my screen. Nope. Um, let's try Unreal just in case. Yep. Do you hear anything here? Also no. So much for our technical run through yesterday, which was awesome. But this is what live streaming is. We dance on our feet and engage on our toes. What about sharing either the whole screen or just a window? So that time I was trying uh, the screen. I'll, I'll try a window instead. And um, let's try, this is just the window. Also no. Okay. Are there any audio device properties for when you're sharing it offers you? No. Uh, cool. So let's get dangerous. Because here on Wise Up on Air, hands on, woo ha, 
-hmm. We love nothing more than a little danger. So that looks like impactor as well, if I'm right. And while it might be larger than life, uh, I would like to imagine that it actually does play sounds. And are you able to hear that over in your part of the world? Probably not until I go to presenter mode. Pick a window, include sound, and how about now? Hear that over there? Okay. I hear that. Well, then yep. my suggestion is let me be your hands as we walk through <laughs> wow. this demo. And if you're following along out there in the world of the internet, uh, we thank you for sticking with us through that technical challenge. Uh, if you've been working from home this last year, you know that life is kind of all about creative improvisation and success in tiny increments. So <laughs> welcome to our demo. Uh, we'll give it another try here as we move out of the wise side of the impactor hands-on uh, with Unreal. And uh, let's just keep moving forward. So to the um, wine glass. Could I, before we go to Unreal, yeah. uh, could, we, could I just ask you to do some things here? And, I'm ready. Uh, yeah. And why? So you can, um, if you solo the first two yep. impact and body for this for the same file, that's like resynthesis. So that's just that sound file has been split apart into impact and body. And now we're using the impact and the body for that sound file. So it's basically just resynthesizing it. Got it. And, um, and let me actually scroll it back for a second. So we've got a sound SFX object. We've got the impactor source plugin that we've added here uh, on top. On top. Uh, yeah. And when you double click that, I've uh, rearranged my layout so that the source editor is part of uh, my design layout. Uh, into that, we've got five wave files. And as Ryan illustrated in the presentation, those five wave files, they get sucked in and kind of pulled in many directions uh, and arrive back in the impactor plugin. And what we're doing right now is just soloing the impact and body for one of those wave files, which as you mentioned, should sound exactly the same as what you dragged in. Now, if you, if you, Unsolo both of them and then uncheck the impact, for example, and then solo both of them again. Yep, gonna do it. Now, all you hear now is the sinusoids. Mm -hmm. um, so this is like the, we like filter out the, the very resonant part of the file. That's the, the first part of the analysis and that's just then resynthesize using actual syn sinusoids. So we just synthesize that using sine waves. Um, and then if you uh, unsolo both of them, uncheck body and check impact. Somehow the live streaming is impacting the performance, but I'll just chalk hmm. that up to the fun. I, I suspect that this is a bug I fixed in the next point release, 21 <laughs> oh, no. There you go. Okay, and so now... Uh, if, you, if you solo the body as well. So now all we hear is the... It's just the excitation of, of the filter. So it's like, ideally a very minimal sort of impact zone. Now you'll notice that if if you listen to just the impact and just the body, something's missing. Like that's not all that's there. And the reason is, as Ryan explained earlier, in the body part 
of the analysis, you also have these filter banks. Um, and the impact part of the sound is sent through the, that filter bank, which, which resonates it. So that's, that's the added bit you get when you combine them. Um, and that's why it's not just simply splitting the file in two. There's, it's, there's some crossover between impact and body. But that allows you to then also send that, that simple excitation signal through different filter banks of different body parts of different sound, um, which is why we chose to split it up like that. Cool. Uh, and we've also got some parameters dialed in as well. You can see indicated by the orange RTPC icon here that we've authored some RTPCs. And again, as part of the integration demo, these are wired in on the Unreal side, which we'll dig a little bit deeper into. But do you want to talk through some of these properties while we're here? Sure. Um, so the the first one is mass. Um, and this is a, a fun parameter to play with because uh, it it's basically allows you to grow and shrink your sound, which is why it's called mass. Um, and we, we basically do some frequency warping to make the sound just sound bigger, more oomphier um, when the mass is dialed up. And then we sort of warp the frequencies to make it sound slighter or smaller on the other end. Um, it's working great. And then um, below that you have velocity, which uh, the name for this parameter is inspired by like MIDI synthesizers. So it's basically just the force, um, the force with which an object is struck. Um, yeah. But it's not just a an amplitude control in that much like a physical object, if you strike it harder, you're, you would be exciting higher frequencies. Uh, well, an, a, a maximum velocity is sort of the whole sound, and as we go down, we also kind of curtail the high frequencies. Yeah, it's believable. Again, we're, we're talking about the wine glass at this point, uh, and again, at, at a high velocity, that's like, that's the sound a wine glass makes right before it breaks after it's been dropped off a table, right? That's the impact of it. Whereas, oh, okay, it just, it's on the carpet, it fell on the carpet, cool. Yeah, it's not just the amplitude, it's so much more. Yeah, and with, with those two, with mass and velocity, you can get, you can design quite an expressive system. If you like, if you send reasonable or uh, realistically inspired values for mass and velocity from your game to WISE to control all of these collisions, um, you can get some nice dynamic collisions as, as things start hitting into each other. Um, we can talk quickly about position as well. Great. Uh, posi position is inspired by the way you might hit a resonating membrane, like like a drum head. It'll it'll resonate with different um, peak frequencies depending on where you strike it. So this is just like a non-linear frequency um, ramps are applied depending on where that position. Uh, parameter is. Yeah, and we'll hear a little bit of that in the Unreal demo when we go to a, a, the plate of glass, right? That's a great example yeah. of position and, and again, really uh, takes it from being just a simple sample playback to being this um, physically modeled or more physical representation um, of, of the process. Cool. Uh, and again, with each of these, we have the ability to set a static value for the property or go full parameterization with the RTPC. Uh, we also have the randomization value to add a little bit of uh, wildness to it. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's comprehensive and really custom built towards this idea of impacts and uh, and physical interaction, right? It's not all it can do. And we'll circle back to that here in a little bit. 
Uh, it's true, but we, we haven't said on this stream yet, it's probably worth emphasizing that uh, this w uh, was designed and built with an assumption about the kind of sounds that it treats um, realistically, I guess you could say. Uh, so, you, you know, for this instance, we chose to focus on impact sounds and, and do our best there. And you could imagine other plugins that focus on other types of or categories of sounds. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, rounding up the last of our properties, uh, roughness. Yeah, so roughness basically just adds some frequency modulation and some FM, FM synthesis in the, in the body part, so in the sinusoids. Um, this, can be, this can be really effective for metallic type sounds, like clanging. That, that kind of jarring resonance that you get. Mm -hmm. um, and it, yeah, it just adds some color. Excellent. Uh, and if at any time, you know, if folks have been using WISE for a while, we've got this great property help, which gives you uh, a clear understanding of what the properties are, what their values are, uh, and what they do. Uh, is there a sound that you feel shows off the roughness property really well? Um, there's an oil drum sound. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just below the wine glass. Cool. Yeah, and again, we're talking a giant oil drum. Let's even mess around with the mass of that while we're while we're here. Sorry, that's the pack position. Here's the mass. That's a big oil drum. Hmm. Smaller. Tiny oil drum, small impact. Love it. Uh, question coming in from the chat from Blake. Hey, uh, will the assets use an impact or react to wise normalization? Is that a question? Is that an answer that you know, Damien? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, but I'll test it. Um, I don't, if, if the question is talking about the, the sound files that are uh, loaded into the, the plugin, I don't believe they'll be affected yeah, by the I wouldn't, normalization. I wouldn't setting. think so. Mm -hmm. uh, good question. And the answer is, we don't think so. Because those, <laughs> because those assets are consumed by the plugin, kind of torn apart in order to get the, the different components that we dynamically recombined, they're not handled the same way as um, loudness normalization for, um, for media in, in the rest of the pipeline. So it's the... the that might be an occasion to, as you, as you mentioned that it's broken up, the sound's broken apart. Is it worth mentioning the project st uh, folder structure and where your analysis is saved and where the totally. synthesis is saved. Okay. Yeah, we could do it. Uh, not sure if you have the Project Explorer window open. Let's do it. I mean, this is hands-on. Folks are in for it. And it's very exciting. Let me get that up and loaded into our magic. So I'm going SDK. I'm going Audio Kinetic to my installed version of the Impactor plugin. Uh, remind me what the path is. Oh, uh, I guess where the Wise project is. Yep. So SDK. Uh... There it is. SDK X64. No. Uh, uh, SDK plugins Impactor. 
Beautiful. Yeah, unreal. Plugins, impact uh -huh. unreal. I had to check myself. <laughs> Great. Okay, let me get this screen up. And, oop, yep, almost, yep, cool. Perfect. Um, so in the WISE project folder there. Yep, almost there. Uh, okay, here we are, WISE project. We're in the version that I've installed the SDK, plugins folder, and impactor. Unreal and the Impactor UE4 demo. Uh, yeah, so in the Wise Project folder, in the Originals folder. Yep. Uh, so anyone who's familiar with Wise will know that when you load sound ass uh, assets in, be it a WAV file or a media source for a plugin, a copy will be put in the Originals folder. So in this case, because we're using Impactor, it will be in Plugins slash Impactor. Great, great. And there's the like the wave files that we've loaded in, and there's also AKD files there. Uh, AKD files are used for a, a lot of different things in DAWs. Uh, usually, it, it uh, stores some values that help draw the curve and like a waveform editor. And so we've stashed the anal audio analysis information for Impactor in there. So you'll notice this, it's actually kind of a a little bit of a bigger file but it's holding you know, the filter coefficients and the sinusoid uh, frequencies and phases and the uh, leftovers there. So um, something to consider, I think it's useful to be aware of that depending on how you do your version control or save files and stuff. Impactor analysis doesn't take very long. You wouldn't lose a lot of time. If you lost your AKD files, it would simply just have to rerun it again. But if you, if you are as amb ambitious enough to do this on thousands of files, uh, you might save yourself a few minutes. Um, when you press play, of course, like every other asset, uh, this stuff gets packed into the WEM file in the project cache, uh, the WEM file, and uh, that's in the top here. Yeah, uh, plugins, impactor, and there's the that's those are the media assets that contain all of the analysis information uh, that the runtime uses to resynthesize the sound. So. Um, a little bit nitty gritty, but I thought it was oh, it's, yeah. uh, useful to point that out. Yeah, uh, I love it. It always helps to know the people in your neighborhood. And by that, I mean your WISE project folder and, and where Impactor puts the kind of thing. So if people are looking for it, there you go. Uh, Back to our neighbor with the bucket banging. Yes, thank you for that comment. Uh, is it an oil drum or is it a bucket? Uh, it's, yeah, a little bit of both. Uh, <laughs> I hope that's not anyone's real neighbor, but yeah. Uh, cool, okay, so that was roughness uh, and a good example of that. What about minimum duration? So this is specifically if you're if you have a looping sound, um, it can be problematic if you have very short sounds like footsteps, if they're like you know half a second long, they'll just without this parameter they'll just keep repeating as soon as one sound finishes. So minimum duration allows you to set a minimum duration so that it pads silence after the footsteps. So if you want constant looping footsteps, um, you can turn up the minimum duration until the looping sounds better. Got it. And I'm so glad you said footsteps because footsteps are impacts. Am I right? Yeah. It's like our body <laughs> impacting the earth. Uh, and, and again, a huge opportunity here with the Impactor plugin is to take a, a smaller number of assets and get kind of extensive variations. And this is, you know, leading into a question from the chat, you know, what's the difference in memory between five impact variations as is versus the you know five impact sounds in the impactor plugin so let's talk first about the memory difference what's the size difference going to be is it significant uh, is there a significant amount of savings but then let's talk about exponential variations and opportunities there so 
on the topic of memory, is there a big difference? Uh, yeah, I, I would say I'm just looking at the preview window, and I think the Explorer is still open. Boom. Uh, so now we can see the tool, great. Um, uh, for now, uh, an impactor model, if you will, like what was stored in that AKD file, is slightly bigger than you know one impactor sound, so one row uh, of that that list is slightly bigger than an original sound file because we're storing some audio data, but we're also storing some filter coefficients and some sign frequencies and stuff. Uh, but the real benefit is that when you if you just have five footstep sounds and you're randomizing between them, well, you have five sounds. And uh, as you've seen so far, the way that the, the UI highlights the combination that it's listening to, well, with five impactor sounds, you have uh, five times five variations, basically 25. And so, you know, if maybe there's an, a 10% cost or a 20% cost to, um, that's not a precise number, but I like a little bit of a cost yeah. is for one more impactor file. Uh, the point is, is you get like a, 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 a exponentially more variations. You know, five impactor files is still less than 25 regular wave files. Yeah, well, and I think that's where it's that's where the the comparison starts, right? Because you get the the body to impact exponential um, combination. But then where it extends even further is with the way that you're doing mass, velocity, position, roughness. Like these are properties you don't get from a simple pitch shifting of, you know, let's say five wave files in this example, right? Those mm -hmm. properties are pulling at, um, you know, variations or expanding on the diversity of those variations in a very focused way in that they all sound similar uh, while at the same time, you know, giving you that parametric control to be able to tailor it to what's happening in the game. Uh, let's listen to this, some rock breaking. Do you have a favorite one? Is it going to be the, the low thud? Should we start there? Sure. All right. So cool. This is so this is a this, with these rock break sounds. Um, I kind of layered various impactor instances together, um, to like to cover all the different components that happen when a rock breaks apart or is impacted. Yeah. So I think there there's the low thud, and then some of them are more like mids highs to get that sort of crumble type sound. And this, so this is an example of where I've used, I've kind of broken the rules a bit because Impactor was designed for, I don't know if you can hear me clicking, uh, for like very impactful sounds. Um, but here we have like a very dynamic waveform, amplitude waveform. There's like multiple transients. Um, and that is the reason that I've had to sort of exclude a lot of the body components. And so that's, because that's what we're seeing here where where variations have been removed, you've gone through a process of soloing them and comparing them, and then just kind of weeding out the ones that that don't sound right. Yeah, and uh, you you'll have to exclude more if, if you break the rules more, basically. Yeah. Um, Whereas there was one thing that can happen. There was one body so. in this example in the low thuds where you were like, well, that just doesn't quite work. Yeah. Uh, but then, like you said, as you have a more complex and more uh, transients, you've had to be even more selective with your combinations. It seems like in, in this particular case, there's a really even cut, like you're using the impacts of the crumble sounds and the bodies of the break. Was that just a happy accident or uh, is there a thought I process there? I don't have a good answer for that. I assume it was a happy accident. It was a long time ago I, I designed yeah. this, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that one's cool too. And again, let's let's take the mass of that down. You know, just it goes from a tiny crumble yeah. to a giant avalanche so, without the artifact in that you would normally associate with pitch shifting, right? And without the time dilation yeah. as well. So no time scaling in that. And usually, um, so when you're additioning these things in Wise, it can be not as effective as actually 
uh, auditioning it from the game because usually when you reduce the mass, you use the you would reduce the velocity a little bit. They kind of go hand in hand. So sometimes when you reduce the mass, you get you expect a very small sound, but then it's really it's struck really hard, so you don't you don't get the uh, the realistic feel. Great. So we're we're doing this kind of scientific study of the implementation within the Impactor plugin kind of picking apart the properties, you know, showing you what you have to work with. But I think like you just said, where it really comes to life is when you integrate it in a dynamic uh, and living experience where you get that dynamic prop property randomization or property um, parameterization. Yeah. Cool. Anything else we should look at in the abstract that you feel like uh, is worth it before we jump into Unreal? Uh, no, I think this is a good point okay. to jump over. Yeah, excellent. Uh, do you want to try jumping into the uh, presentation again and sharing your Unreal uh, with audio? If that works, awesome. If it doesn't work, want to try restarting Unreal, if that's not too big a deal. OK. Um. And thanks to folks in the chat. Um, it's great to have your input on this. Uh, as you can see, we're, we're really just trying to open up the box, show you the toys that you have to play with when it comes to this kind of technology. Um, and it'll be exciting to get this into the dynamic environment um, to see if we can uh, see if we can show you where this lands. So there's no audio yet. Uh, okay. The suggestion from the chat was uh, open it once again after you're sharing your screen. So maybe go with a screen share scenario instead of a window share. Okay, so Exit Unreal, share screen, then open Unreal yep. again. Let's give that a try. Okay. And thanks for the suggestion. Uh, that one came fr further up here. Yeah, from Carlos, thanks. We'll see if we can't get that going. Otherwise, guess what? My hands are in the Unreal project. I will be your hands. Yeah, full fail. Sorry for that. Uh, OK, mm. let's go to plan B. Uh, I like that we are flexible. Uh, thanks for folks who are sticking around for it. And let's see what kind of fun we can have in Unreal and get this set up. For for you. Uh, and here we go with a new one of those. Yeah. That looks perfect. And by perfect, I mean perfectly impactful. interesting though yes okay and we're back in three two one unreal is that unreal uh not exactly you heard it though didn't you uh, do you need to share it to our audio uh, connection? Right. Let me try that instead. I like where your head is at. Boom. All right. And teams and.
Hmm. Well, the good news is you can hear it. The bad news is you can't see it because it's frozen. I can still wreck stuff though. So let's see if we can't iterate on that. Uh, cool. Oh, I like that better. How are we feeling about that? Um, I can't hear it. Yeah. Nothing for you, and that's because I didn't push the magic button. Remember that button? Mm -hmm. Every time. Let's get there one more time. And again, thanks, folks, for hanging in. Share content with sound and Unreal and breaking stuff. Yeah. There we go. Cool. How about some this magical volume mixer? I think I keep that Unreal volume kind of quiet because you just never know. But I think we're doing better now. Do we have everything? Yeah? Yeah? All right. Sounds OK to me. Cool. Uh, let's see if we get this a little bit more pleasant. Cool. Well, uh, apologies for the technical challenges. It really did all work well in the dress rehearsal. But now, let me be your hands. Let me take you on a journey here in the wise, unreal impactor demo map. So let me start over from scratch. What can I drive people through in this demonstration? Um, let's start with footsteps. Yeah. I guess. If you play the uh, play and editor. Yep. And then just walk around. Let's see if I can't crank on so the... a little bit more even. Great. Yep. If I have to, I'll get connected to the game and crank it up there as well. So these are uh, like square tiles on the floor are just different materials and the footsteps are produced like we've discussed with instances of impactor and lots of examples of footsteps on that material and you're just like cross synthesizing as you produce a different sound great with stuff like footsteps we often talk about i think the loop point uh, as a, something that is like immersion breaking. Like if you're walking on a surface, you, you don't want the, the player to ever hear the same sound again and, and suddenly realize that they're listening to like a loop or a limited set of sounds. And so certainly Impactor, I think, does a really good job of tackling that. Um, we were ne we never came across, in, in, you know, in, a, in the final result, we never came across examples where surfaces felt redundant uh, in what they sounded like. There's a, there's a, a fun little um, like joke example I left in, I think. If you if you go through that glass wall again Here we go. and stay, stay on the metal, I think it's the best example. If you press up and down on your keyboard, like up arrow, if you, if you keep pressing up, that's going to like press up multiple times. That makes the character bigger, and it makes the footsteps sort of. Oh. It grows the mass of the footsteps. Cool. Okay, that's a pro tip. And then if if you tap down, it shrinks the character down, so it's little. Ah. Yeah. So there you go. Now it's now it's really big. Cool. And you can go down quite small so it, it sounds like no safe palms. 
also the, the speed the speed of the character changes so you get like yes. quick little mouse footsteps up to like big giant so that's just like a little fun thing I left in to demonstrate like the use of mass and velocity oh yeah we're on the wood floor now it's got the creaks in it yeah you might have gotten yourself stuck <laughs> Okay, I played video games. Yeah. This is this is all fun. Wow, <laughs> nice, nice Easter egg. Is that so? Yeah. Um, <laughs> it smells like honey. I shrunk the kids when you yeah. <laughs> hey, there's that barrel. This is the oil barrel. Yeah, we were talking about. This actually has a subtle position mapping. So, the position parameter is mapped from, I believe bottom to top um, so it should be like the resonance kind of changes as, as you go from bottom to top but it's it's hard to kind of um, it's hard to follow it because there's lots of other randomization going on right but, um, but what I do love is this one yeah and this is using that positioning parameter as well to triangulate the center of the glass with this extents. Is that correct? Yeah. It's basically a, a circle. So the further you are from the center, the further the position parameter is to the, to the end. Yep. So, um, yep. One important thing to know is that the position parameter is not going from like least resonant to most resonant. There's There's peaks in the middle. Because it's inspired by like a resonating drum, which and that's how it works with a resonating drum. Like there is peak resonant positions, so it, uh, it's a complex mapping. Yeah, and if we listen critically in the center, <laughs> that's a collision <laughs> collision detection error. Okay, okay. Uh, you might want to move that. Bit. Yeah. There you go. Uh, so if we listen in the center. I think I broke that piece. <laughs> nice. Uh, in the center, though, it has less resonance. Yeah. On the extent, it's much more hollow. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So it, it is true that the when position is um, at zero, it's most resonant, I think, and when position is at one, it's least resonant. Gotcha. Uh, you like take out most frequencies, but then it's not linear in between those. Is the important. And in on that particular glass pane, then uh, the center is position equals one. Uh, yeah, I believe so. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll actually just make sure that's true. So um, another thing, fun thing to do is break things, obviously. Yeah, I broke many things um, in my life. <laughs> Did anyone catch the electrical uh, sound that I layered in there? Whoops. <laughs> I, I've been having my own fun in, in the demo. Oh, cool. So the cool thing about the, the chair and the, the wooden boxes in the room just to the left is they are I does, the the blueprint implementation for those is they exist as like one object that impacts when you shoot it with a certain force, but when they break, they become multiple different objects that all impact with each other. So that gives you these like dynamic. If you break a box apart you hear the individual parts hitting off each other after it's broken and like as it tumbles to the ground is that a model swap uh once a certain damage is taken by the object yeah it's uh it's basically once if an, if an impact occurs with a certain force then the object breaks apart and I think you can hold down the mouse to shoot a larger mass, right? Yeah. And break the big boxes. Here we go. It's on now. 
Yeah. Nice. And so if I hit this box, it's using a an impactor implementation for a wooden wooden box for wood, let's say. Yeah. And the mass of that box is being calculated from the Unreal side, passed in as a parameter. Uh, when it reaches a certain damage, which it will do in a second when I blast it with this giant ball, uh, what we get is we get um, multiple wooden objects. They're still using the same impactor source, but now the mass has been scaled uh, from yeah. the Unreal side as a parameter, along with the velocity, of course, and and what we get is it's the same wooden sound, but it dynamically modifies based on the size of the object and of course the velocity of the object as well. Yeah, so um, just to kind of generalize that in this Unreal demo, every time two objects collide, each one of them triggers an impact event. So in this case, the projectile ball is also in fact triggering an event. It might it might be. The, because of the fact that the wood's density is so much smaller than the ball's density, it might be that the ball is just not effectively. It's triggering a an impact event with like zero velocity and and possibly zero yeah zero velocity. So you don't hear the ball. It's the wood that you hear. Right, right. Whereas um, if I do click, you can hear the ball against the wall because yeah. because because it's the loudest thing. It's because the wall is like harder than the wood. Got it. Got it. So it, it makes the ball resonate more. Perfect. Perfect. I'm. I gotta break this box. Yeah. Okay. Here. So you hear. It's cool that you hear like for each piece of the box that falls, you hear an impact. So it really it feels real. Yeah, it's great. And yeah, like like you said, it's each piece of that box and the whole box when it's not broken it's all the same impactor instance the only thing that's making it so dynamic is the different values for mass and velocity that get sent from the physics calculations great uh, if if you fire a big ball into those wine glasses it's a really satisfying smash sound oh where's the wine oh down here on the floor. yeah okay <laughs> that was awesome uh, as a person who has spent a significant amount of time on different projects uh, working on physics systems I know that this demonstration makes it look easy and certainly that is what impactor is meant to do in a physics situation right we provide very clear parameterization for common used physics kind of stuff. But let's, do you want to go a little bit deeper? Folks out there in the chat, like let us know how deep do you want us to go on this? Because I'm willing to go all the way down. Blueprints, physics, properties, like you tell us where you want to go with this or, or what pieces are missing in your education around impact or, or physics general because I think uh, I think we're having a good time so let's go blueprints is that where we started okay. you want to start with the authoring on the objects over in the outliner I think we can go into blueprints Great. I think you're right it's a good point um, so if you show the content browser which is bottom, yeah. that bottom panel. And then, yeah, uh, Blueprints, Impact Demo. Um, if you open, um, there should be something called Impact Component somewhere, just left of Impactor Component. Uh, sad. Let's do this. What could go wrong? There you go. So, um, 
it's in the impactor component where the logic is for calculating the mass and velocity when two objects collide. Great. Um, so there is a function, I believe, called... There's get impact force and get impact velocity, I think. Let's see. Well, we've got the get material. We've got the physical material. So, uh, just before you go into that, what we're looking at here is impacted by dynamic object. Yep. Uh, I use the terminology dynamic and static to refer to objects that can or cannot move. So, objects that can move are dynamic. Objects that can't move are static, and that's like walls, for example. Um, and here we're looking at an object that has been impacted by a moving object. Um, so at this point, the object in question that has been impacted could be static or could be dynamic. Um, and yeah, so what's happening here? Yep. Sorry. Go ahead. I'm I'm seeing that we get the material. Uh, we get the material density. Um, we make a bunch of choices about it. Uh, we get the product yeah. of those things and then set all of that information on on the object. Is that a good uh, overview? If you, the the last return node there is, is the that purple one. Um, Got it. So we re we're returning an impact force from this function. That's uh, the point of this function. And it's like that force kind of represents um well it's just the force of the impact and the force of the impact depends on the density of each object and the mass of each object and the velocity of each object um and there's also some logic to do with the direction of each object Got it. so i i wrote i wrote a blog about this um which kind of goes into these details if you have a a ball rolling along the ground um because it's rolling like almost parallel to the to the ground it's impacting the ground, but very slightly as it rolls. Whereas if you have a ball like hit your ground like this, so that that direction is going to uh, alter the force as well. Um, and yeah, so the density is like the density is important because you might have like a a metal ball impacting a wooden floor versus a sponge impacting a wooden floor, mm -hmm. um, and the density there is obviously going to highly affect. The collision. Um, what else? And you, are there any questions? Because I'm not nothing. Nothing coming chat. in. But so, take me through this. So we've we provide this as part of the demo. Uh, this blueprint for this interaction for an impactor uh, for an object impacted. Um, where does it go next? Like uh, how if you go to yep uh, check impact component collision it's back in the blueprint you oh, were just yep. in um if you look in the functions the list of functions on the left it's the top one yep got it if you double double click that cool yep um now double click impact compo impact component collision Okay, so this this is kind of where you, where like the meat of this component is. Cool. This is like the main logic that happens when two components collide. Great. So, um, we before we were just looking at uh, get impact force, I think, which is called here somewhere. Yep. In fact, let's just look at the. Yeah. Okay. So it's called there. Get impact force. Um, before that, if you if you scroll up a little bit, um, you get the momentum of each object, and you like store that. Yep. And then you use that momentum of each object when you're getting the impact force. Um, and then I'm just reading the comments it's okay. here. Okay. <laughs> getting the mass as well. Yeah. So in brackets there, I've written. There's some strange edge cases like if the mass is over you can override the mass mm -hmm. you can 
I set up the impact component such that you can give a, an object a mass so that you don't read it from the Unreal Physics system. You just has a static mass. So there's like, I'm dealing with that edge case there. I like it. I um, like it. And then we've got the then, break uh, if the impact force is large enough. Yeah. So this is like when the chair or the or the box breaks apart. Um, and sometimes when an object breaks, you'll play a specific break sound. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I don't. So for, I think for the for the chair and the box, I don't actually play a sound because it's better to just let them impact with each other, their component parts. Yeah. But the hanging cubes. Yeah. They are. They use the like Unreal Destruction system, so like you you fracture the mesh and break it apart. So it's nice to play a sort of crumbly break sound when that happens. So that's what this this is where you play those sounds. Um, now at the very end, after you've maybe played a break sound, maybe not, you you send in the impact force, the impact mass, and the impact position. Um, and impact force here can just be read as velocity if we're talking in impact or parameter terms. Sure, sure. And that's that's when you actually post the event. Awesome. Thanks for that walkthrough of the blueprints. Uh, from there, how does that actually land over in the outliner on the object? Should we look at that next? Or was there more to go over in the blueprints? Uh, so the, the blueprint we just looked at is a component called impactor component yep. and all of the objects use like they, they have impactor components in them um so you're looking at what your breakable the breakable chair yeah so if you if you open that if you click edit breakable chair yep. and then go to the viewport which is uh, sorry, yep. It's a tab on the left there. Just down. Nope. Uh, sorry. Go back to breakable chair, and then the sort of lower group of tabs. Ooh. Just below compile. Uh, sorry, my brain. We're doing great. We'll get there. Just below compile. Uh, I've got components. So ah, here, yes. Yeah, click viewport. Yeah. Okay. Woo. Sorry. Right. Okay. Yeah. So now, beautiful. <laughs> um, so this chair, if if you look in the components where you were before, mm -hmm. and sort of expand it, drag it down, so you see over on the left. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. Yeah. So this chair has a ground, which is just a box component uh, mm -hmm. up the top. Yeah. Um, that is the thing that's impacted before the chair is broken. So the the reason I set it up like that is just because that makes the physics nice. Like the chair kind of wobbles or like, um, yeah. So that, that box collision component has an impactor component on it. Okay. Um, it's the one at the very bottom if you look in the uh, components hierarchy. But so when that yeah when that chair is impacted before it's broken, that impact component will do all the logic that we just talked about Beautiful. in the blueprint exactly, and it will trigger a chair like a, a wood sound. Now after that chair breaks apart, all those other impactor components will come into like will be turned on basically. Right. And you have the different um, static meshes for the legs and the back. <clears throat> yeah, so if you click like back or seats or leg, mm -hmm. that's like the actual different parts that break apart. Um, and they have impact components attached to them. Excellent. Yep, I see them here. And tell me about the connection. I know we saw in those blueprints that you were making the material uh, look up what what's the connection between the impactor component here and and determining what material type it is uh, yeah um, so 
I I did that using strings actually. So if you there's an object name. Yep. This one here, chair part, field. for instance. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so here so that, we that chair parts. Whereas yeah, on the exactly. on the component itself, we've got chair defined. So these are two material types. Yeah. That those strings are going to determine which impactor instances are are triggered. Um. Perfect. Yeah. That's great. Uh, so this is one example, and again, we've got this break force threshold. Uh, is that the the point at which it uh, breaks apart? Yeah, yeah. Great. Yeah, okay. Questions out there in, uh, in the world about this? Drop them in. Uh, we're walking through it step by step. Uh, we've talked about the blueprints, the kind of puppeteering the system. Uh, what is behind the impactor component. Uh, we're talking about objects, um, adding the impactor component to it, defining the object name and whether or not it's, um, you know, breakable or not. Um, yeah. Um, if you want to get a little bit further yeah. low level, nitty gritty. Take me there. In the, just in that, in that list of parameters you were looking at. Yep. Um, so you've got object name, uh, is breakable. Down the bottom, there's um, minimum post event. Is that what does that say? Force. Minimum post event force. So below, if if a, if an object, when we go through that blueprint logic we just talked about, if the force we come up with is less than one, then we're not going to post an event. Otherwise, you'd keep getting events as things very slightly hit off each yeah, other. Yeah, we call it physics spamming. It's yeah. real, yeah. and that is the magic button right there. If you're looking for it, there's a lot of buttons. That's the one that fixes spamming of the impact system when it's below a threshold. And then max concurrent voices is it's just like a CPU saving thing. So if, if you've got an, uh, an object that whose impact zone has a large tail, for example, uh, you might stack up like six or seven or up to like ten or whatever voices as it hits around often. So if you if you curtail the max concurrent voices, then it will just like it'll steal voices from itself as it as it reimpacts. Great, and that works in conjunction with the voice properties that you have over in Wise as well. Uh, it's kind of separate, actually. It's just I did all did it all with um, Blueprint. Yeah, but it's its own voice limitation system from an object yeah, yeah. specific perspective. Yeah. 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 But but it's something to be mindful of, and certainly in the context of physics systems, you know, you can dramatically tailor the results of your physics simulation just by changing these uh, these things. The event force, the concurrent voices, which is basically the, the number of simultaneous voices that an object can play. Um, yeah. But again, changing that number on one piece. So we've got four for this uh, component. And then each of these... Uh, if you click the actual impact component... Yeah, sorry, there it is. Yeah, yeah. each of these... Uh, pieces of the chair also have their own limits. So yeah. oftentimes with, in, with physics systems, what you're talking about is this um, scaling number of sounds from a object as it is uh, you know, dramatically impacted. And these are the controls, right? On the objects and the components of that objects themselves, as well as over in wise on a voice volume or globally for voices um, in the project. So these are key pieces yep. to tuning your physics system. So it's great to have that level of detail in the impactor component. Nice. Um, one thing we could mention, I'm just looking at it now. So like I said, I did all the wise event triggering through strings. Yep. So I don't use any uh, event assets or objects here right as so because of that which would be here yeah. yeah yeah got it um so i don't have those like event objects anywhere in the level so i need to like load them myself 
Got when it. I begin the level. So if you go okay, to pause there for a second, though, tell me why. Like the one implementation is that we could just throw an impact event on this um, impactor component, and mm -hmm. we could just do it, right? And it'd be done. However, the reason for using strings instead. Mm, somewhat personal preference. I just didn't want to have yeah. be managing all these assets and um, yeah, there's like arguments for and against that. I guess strings can be a bad way to go as well. If you keep writing them in everywhere and you you might make mistakes. Um, but I I don't know. I just <laughs> it was a simple way to get things going. Cool. Uh, in the beginning. Hey, that's um, that's all right, and that's game development right there. Yeah, <laughs> let's do it. If you go back to the map, yep, and then go to blueprints level blueprint, yep. Yeah, in the event graph here, yep. Uh, just there, get assets by path. Yep. That what I'm doing basically is getting everything in the Wise Audio folder. And just loading them, loading those assets so they're ready to use. Uh, again, this is like you probably wouldn't want to do this if you're making a game because I'm loading like all of the assets. You might want to like stream your assets in a more smart way, depending on what level you're in, where you are in the level. But here we just have like a bunch of impactor assets that are used in this demo, so I just load them all when the map starts. Makes total sense. It's a isolated yeah. thing. Um, and for folks going this deep who have followed us along this far, um, yeah, as you move forward with your project, you may make different choices for loading strategies. Uh, and again, I think branching off from this, uh, the possibilities are endless. Uh, the, um, go ahead. One thing we could do if, uh, if there's time or if you're interested is we could load up the the glass wall blueprint and see where that position mapping is implemented. Let's go. Although, to be honest, I can't remember, so we'll have to... <laughs> Feeling our way um, through it. If, yeah. Glass if you go to the... Yep. It's not just this glass sheet impact. Um, Breakable sheet glass. Try glass sheet impact. Yeah. Um, in fact, what, what to do is go to the level, yep. click on actually one of the glass walls in the level. Beautiful. And then edit the blueprint. This one? Yeah, in the, in the world outliner there, uh, you can click edit. Material impact cube. Yeah. Okay. So there's a there's a boolean there in the variable on the left in the variables section called implement position mapping. Okay. Uh, Great. That yeah. If if you right click that and find. And then double click that. Cool. Okay. <laughs> Wouldn't have been that hard to find, but yeah. Um, so yeah, this is just, the, I, I believe the only, so this, uh, what's it called again? Material impact cube. That's the, that's the object that's used for all of the stationary walls in the level. And the only one that does this in, in position mapping is that glass wall. And, um, if you like sort of zoom out a little bit so we can see all those green boxes. Mm -hmm. um, that's basically it there. Uh, so you get the actor location. You get it scale in 3D. You make your vectors. Get those vector lengths. Yep. Cool. 
This is uh, what's great to me is not only stepping through this uh, with you both. Uh, you're so knowledgeable about what's what you've created, uh, but actually having you tell me what to do in Unreal uh, for someone who maybe doesn't use Unreal every day, I feel like sometimes you just don't know where to poke around, and having that yeah. is actually kind of cool. I like that. Uh, so I hope that's helpful for folks out there as well. Of course, this demo is available for you to grab and poke around in all you want. Um, it's a great place to start imagining your physics systems and uh, yeah, lots of opportunities. Great question from the chat coming in. Any experience using Impactor for music, MIDI instruments mapped to tension parameters? Like, are we gonna have, uh, who's gonna build the first xylophone? Uh, the uh, I actually built a little drum, Impactor drum synth thing. Yeah. Um, like just, messing around this was a long time ago it's nowhere online like guys i didn't it's not public but yeah i messed around with just putting drum samples in and resynthesizing them and stuff and it was fun <laughs> yeah and and you can use impactor the same way you would any other source in wise with midi by targeting it uh as part of your sample set uh someone else was uh messing around with it this week internally at ak and they had carefully like only chosen two impact components and a bunch of body components so that it would sort of ping pong between the two impacts and they had like a kind of like a glitchy uh sounding drum beat or synth pattern going it was really uh, really pleasing to listen to right i saw that that was cool uh, one of our uh ak folks on the china team it's nice uh, so I, I would say, and uh, Martin, good to see you. Thanks for dropping by. Uh, yeah, the, the future is there for you to make it. And I remember all those cool, um, you know, you launch a ball, it bounces off a wooden marimba or a xylophone, you know, demos of the past. Or even was it, was it Wind Garden, the the person who had made the physical um, marble cranking machine that would like bounce balls off of a real thing uh, to make music with it. Uh, I think there's plenty of opportunity for that. And, and like uh, you've both said, just scratching the surface on what could be done there. So a lot of potential. Can't wait to hear what folks get up to with it uh that i think ends our fantastic journey with impactor uh unless you have any closing thoughts or um yeah sorry about my technical dif difficulties but thanks a lot for you know saving the day <laughs> we uh i think we arrived at a place that was the best of both worlds. In fact, if I can say, it was a cross synthesis <laughs> of talents uh, from us all. So great to have both of your experiences. You know, again, Ryan, deep, deep in the plugin side of things, um, in collaboration with Sean. Sean, with your head all the way inside that Unreal Impactor demo map. Fantastic to have your experience and insight. Out there in the world, it's yours. Go grab it. Give it a try. Um, we gave you the steps up front to be able to uh, install it through the launcher, get your licensing put in place, and get uh, find it in, uh, in the SDK folder and get off to the races with this powerful tool for doing uh, impacts cross synthesis and parameterized physics fun and games so i hope this 
has landed well for folks. Thanks again, Ryan and Sean. Thanks Thank for having us on, Damien. Yeah. You bet. Uh, cool. Closing her down.